Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. Hope you're having a great day. Hope this video can make it a little bit better. And happy Thanksgiving. I believe this video is going to come out on Thanksgiving, at least American Thanksgiving. I know some countries like Canada have a different Thanksgiving date. Not really sure how much it's celebrated all over the world though. And I do know I do have a international audience. So if you're also celebrating Thanksgiving today, let me know. Or if your country has a different Thanksgiving, also comment down below. It is always interesting learning about all of your different countries and cultures, and it is really awesome that I have such a diverse and international audience of viewers. Anyways, today we are playing Bard. Haven't recorded a video with him for a while, and I think it would be pretty fun. Also been seeing a lot of comments on my Discord, as well as YouTube videos, kind of wondering if Bard is worth picking up. And hopefully this video can shed some light on that for you. Overall, pretty fun champion. Can be a little bit difficult at the earlier levels. For our star powers, when you summon an ally with buff stats, grant it two random keywords. So you always want to be playing units with buff stats just to get those extra keyword generations. Then we have the cosmic presence plus one starting mana. And then when you draw a card with chimes on it, plant a chime in your deck. So just extra chime generation. Pretty good. If you don't know, Bard and a lot of his units plant chimes near deck, and they kind of work almost the opposite of like a puff cap. Puff cap is on the enemy cards and damages their nexus. Your chimes are on your cards, and when you pull them out, they buff up your units. So pretty awesome. For the relics we're going with, we're going with Corrupted Star Fragment, Succubus Brand, and the Void Born Carapace. Corrupted Star Fragment, very good for Bard. It's kill my supported ally, grant me its stats and keywords. With Bard, your units are going to have a lot of stats and keywords, so putting those all on Bard, making him an absolute monster, very, very good. But this also contributes to your level up condition of increase the total stats of allies in play or hand by 20 or more. So this contributes to that and helps Bard level up even faster, which is very good. Succubus Brand 1-1. One, one. When I kill a unit, summon a random husk. We're at least killing a unit from the Corrupted Star Fragment, and then maybe more when we're attacking. So giving us more stats, which is very, very important to have these stats baseline. Because remember from our star powers, when you summon an ally with buff stats, grant it two random keywords. So since we're starting off Bard with some stats, we know every time we play him, he's going to get those two random keywords. Very, very important. Then the Void Board Carapace, when any unit dies, grant me its keywords. Also with that evolve, giving Bard, again, some more stats and just all the keywords. This makes Bard an absolute monster, really, really fun. Before we get into it, just want to say a special thank you to all my awesome members, especially today on Thanksgiving. You guys are absolutely amazing supporting the channel. I'm trying to do this YouTube thing full time despite covering such a niche game. So all you awesome members going that extra mile supporting the channel is so greatly appreciated. But then all of you also just watching, subscribing, liking my videos has also really been appreciated. I couldn't do this without all of you awesome viewers. So thank you to everyone and let's get on with the video. All right, let's see what we get for our first power. Um, Raiding party, not bad, but we're not necessarily going to be damaging the Nexus like too many times. Normally with Bardi, you just do some big massive hits with your units. Uh, the other two are okay, but honestly, all common powers, I think we do a little bit better than that. Stabilize is decent. It lets our bard consume the other bard, so essentially doubling their stats. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and grab this. Alright, up first we have Ezreal with Power Overwhelming. Pretty solid opening hand. We'll actually give it a bard because we know we're going to draw another one. Bird the Bell Ringer is great to play turn one. Has buff stats, so you know it's gonna get some keywords. Granted, they're probably gonna kill them immediately, or at least try to. But they both got spell shield, wow. So, we could attack. They would die, though. I think I might just try to save the lifesteal. And so let's actually end up passing here. Nice. Uh, I think let's go ahead and play this because it is the tankiest, so it'll help for blocking. Uh, so they'll play this, that will give them three power. Still should be able to survive this? We'll see. Alright. 
Alright, so we'll be able to play our Bard, which will be great, because even if they kill the Bellringer, because of our Voidborn Carapace, we'll still be granted that, uh, that keyword. Alright, let's go like this. Hmm. Almost able to end the game. Don't think there's anything we could do to really change that. Although, actually, you know what? All right, so I rearranged it. We will potentially able be able to end the game. Let's let's go ahead and try it. Yep, still GG. Nice. Alright, that went pretty well. Uh, Chime Hunter, that's not bad. I think we'll go here. It's pretty expensive, but it'd be a massive unit, and hopefully we get some cost reduction for it. Felios, probably not. These don't have buff stats. This is really expensive. None of these are really wonderful here. So the good thing about Ash is she has that mana deposit, but that's kind of it. I think we'll go with Pantheon just because these are both pretty cheap. And with the Mountain Goat having the Farsight, means we'll always have something to play turn one if we just had, like, really bad luck. So nothing really great here, but I guess we'll go with this one. Right, healer, Mecha Caster. I might actually want that Mecha Caster. The Mecha Yordles are pretty awesome. Uh, I think let's go for Swain with Power Overwhelming. All right, pretty solid opening hand. Granted, the Starlight Stag doesn't actually have buff stats, so it's a little rough. But the Bandle Commando, a very strong, very strong card. It has buff stats, it's elusive, you know it's going to get two extra keywords, and has Spell Shield. Always a great candidate for you to consume with your uh, Bard. War Mason, reporting for duty. Make the Empire proud. So, none of our cards that we can play actually have buff stats. I guess let's play this just as a solid card. Alright, so this could consume this here. Dragging this aside. All right, so that should be GG. They do have some aggressive spells, but I think that should still be fine. Well yep, GG. Nice. Man, first two games we haven't even really needed our uh, chimes at all. Stellacorn, not bad as a buff target because it has some strong keywords, but really expensive with terrible stats. Uh, I think Cosmic Binding's not too bad. Alright, I think let's try the Mecha Caster. If we get a really good two cost, like Bouncer and Bolt, except without the Ephemeral, that kind of sucks. I do like the Fury Horn. So let's get two of those and actually do a reroll. These two are really the ones you want to look out for because they're such solid cards. Yeah, I'm still going to grab two of them. If they don't have any items, hopefully we can just get some solid items to put on them. But yeah, really, really good cards. 
All right, champion item chest, let's go there. So, Fiora with unstable inventory. All right, let's get rid of this one. And I think for this situation, I would rather have the Fury Horn. Yeah, so let's go like this. These cards are kind of more of an investment. They're fine on their own. And then if you can just get a couple good items on them, they can really actually just carry you. Uh, I think we'll just, yeah, save our, save our mana. Let's play the Fury Horn. Alright, we'll just attack with both of these. Solid damage down and buffing up our top deck, which will be great. Because then they'll have buff stats, which means when we play them, they will have uh, two extra keywords. Won't that just kill him? I mean, okay, I guess. All right. Uh, let's not play our Bard. We want to make sure we have the attack token. Otherwise, the other copy of Bard would get wasted. Uh, so let's play the Stone Stackers because it has buff stats. I guess we'll play this Saga Seeker just because we don't want to cap out on mana. Alright, they're going to want to play their Fiora. We'll play our... Bard. Strength and grace, beauty in the blade. All right, drag this aside. Onwards. So that should be enough to end the game. Yep, GG. Uh, this could be decent. It's a bit of a low tempo play, but pretty solid. And yeah, hopefully we could just get some like cost reduction maybe to make this a little bit better. But it'll definitely be solid when we don't like have any units to play. Uh, that, yeah, it'll still be fine. Colossal Hammer, awesome, <laughs> giving us tons more damage. Uh, let's go to the shop. Yeah, endurance is fine. Making this have quick attack will actually be decent, because that means the other two keywords it get will be something else. At least that should be how it works. And then I don't think I'll bother with any of the rest of these. Alright, so Zoe with power overwhelming. Alright, we have Bard. Let's get rid of the Saga Seeker. And I think we're fine with the, the rest. The Bouncer and Bolt will be decent to kill their Zoe. Yeah, sometimes it's good to get cards early and kind of have it as a investment. Eh, that's fine. Just because you know if it gets a couple items on it, it'll be unstoppable later. Alright, so we'll just have to pretty much take the hit here, but it'll be fine. This is an actual boss fight, so we'll heal up after the end of this. I guess we'll play the Mountain Goat just to be able to block something. Yeah, let's just kill the other Mountain Goat. And, yeah, we're fine with that. Always good to know when you should take just take the hit in Path of Champions. Alright, Moon Glow, not bad. Again, with Zoe, you always want to pay attention to what uh, spell they make. And also with Bard, you always want to make sure you're playing the unit that has the highest stats. So even though we have two Bards, one of them is higher because it got hit by a Chime. These 
Alright, we'll drag Zoe aside. Probably just end the game right like that. <laughs> uh, it's such a big scary bar, it's so fast. GG. Um, spell shield's not bad. Quick strike blade, good, but could potentially backfire. I think we'll just go for the spell shield just to give us a little bit more of consistent protection. And then again, when you're putting these keywords on your champion, the keywords you then generate from your star powers will have to pick from the other available ones, which means you have a higher chance of getting the really good ones like Elusive or Lifesteal. Crush is decent. I think we'll actually go for rush them down so crush is good but normally we've been not struggling with generating overwhelm already so i think we'll just go for rush them down we're trying to end games very quickly and that could potentially help more i think let's go for that item chest so sejuani with duplicate uh let's get rid of these two also i don't think it works like this anymore but I think there's one of these powers that buffs your unit stats, where it will trigger first before your star powers. So it essentially means everything you play gets those extra keywords. Uh, let's just play the Bandle Commando. I think this one activates after you play it. Let's try though. Yeah, so this one doesn't work. I think there's one star power, or just power, that will trigger before. It could be the one that just all your units have one power permanently. Uh, not 100% sure though. All right, let's just attack like this. And we can play this just as a blocker. We probably don't want to play our Bard this turn because they have the attack token. So we can play our Pantheon. Alright, so we're losing some units, but killing most of theirs. Not wanting to take too much Nexus damage. Alright, not too bad. They'll have 5 mana. They can't play their Sejuani yet. But we got our Bard, who's already leveled. So let's go like this. Both of our units will have elusive. They shouldn't be able to stop this. This should be GG. All right, pretty solid. Uh, getting, well, this actually wouldn't be bad. It's empowered three, and because of this, it would have that three. Uh, but yeah, getting more of our birds uh, would be pretty good. Let's go for the item chest. This having the buff stats will give it those two extra keywords, so that'll actually be pretty good. All right, so Tom Kench with unyielding determination. All right, they have the attack token first, which kind of sucks for us because that means our bard we won't have him on our attack turn or when we can play him won't be our attack turn Mama's home. These jewels are more than mere trinkets. all 
Alright, so none of these have buff stats really. Alright, we'll play this to buff up our top deck. Uh, let's see. So they'll be able to block both of these, but they shouldn't be able to kill either one. So yeah, let's just attack. Alright, not too bad. Alright, we'll play our Pantheon again. Help on the block. Uh, we won't actually use the Bandle Commando, we'll want our uh, Bard to be able to get that keyword. Now they will have enough mana for their acquired taste. Alright, not too bad. The journey is difficult. These will protect you. I think I'll actually attack with this one first, because then when it dies, the other one will get all of its keywords. Uh, this one already has overwhelm. Let's go here. They will know. Proud and loud. Alright, not too bad. They do have that. Unyielding though. So it might actually be better to attack with our bard like this. Consume the second bard. Alright, I think this should be the best attack we can probably do. We could end the game if they didn't have the unyielding, but this should get through their first health bar. Alright, not too bad. We have a 2020 Bard, who's already leveled up. Not great. We don't want Tom Kench really being able to level up too much. Because once he levels, he's going to double his stats and might actually be able to contest our bard. Let's play our Chime Hunter. Yep. So he's stronger, so he'll hit harder, but still... <laughs> Top Kench is still alive. We will find you a good death, my friend. I know. I am ready. Oh, I don't require men. Alright, let's just open attack, and again, they shouldn't really be able to stop this at all. Alright, GG. Alright, that took a little longer because of that unyielding. That Guiding Touch is decent. Although Crystal Carrier, this will be good because we could play him round one and then play our Bard like around early with the extra mana. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, that's not really great for us. Let's try to use one of our rerolls, see if we can get something. Uh, Fine, decent defensive power. Right, let's try to head for the shop, see if we can get something else good. So we have Zed with unstable inventory. We're really looking for something like potentially Yip's Genius or Evolution, especially Welcome Gifts. All 
by having this right away will be really good. Yeah, I think we'll play this just to have another unit on the board. <laughs> sure. Oh, well, that's annoying. Well, at least they got these out of their hands now. Right, so they play their Zed. We could play our Bard, but we don't actually have the attack token, so we'll just play our Pantheon to block. Yep, not too bad. It is pretty hilarious how Bard flies through other champions' level up animations. Uh, it's pretty funny. Alright, that's pretty much the most useless dawn and dusk ever. Alright, GG. <laughs> oh, actually, this is too interesting. So the Chime Hunter, that would just make it absolutely massive. The one issue is a 4 cost, so we're kind of struggling to play a 4 cost. But this would make it so this just is a great removal spell. It's a countdown 2, so it's only going to hold it for 2 turns. That could be really good, though. Um... Sure, it's another elusive that we could consume, so I guess we'll grab that. I think I'm fine with leaving these. What do we want to cut? I think let's actually cut the Mountain Goat. We have a lot of other two costs, so we're not really struggling to play something. Alright, Nautilus with Power Overwhelming. A uh, pretty good opening hand. Always decent to have your Mini Morph in your opening hand so that you can... Let it count down, so that when they do play a giant unit, you can easily counter it. Alright, playing both of our birds. Uh, let's actually kill this first, so it gets its heal out of the way. Alright, not too bad. Alright, we'll just play our Pantheon so we can block anything. Yeah, I didn't really think they were actually going to attack. Alright, we'll play our Bard. They will have some stuns available. There's the Shivana level up, Galio. I think one of those was Azir. <laughs> Alright, let's attack, consume this, consume that. Sure, let's just drag this aside. I think it's a fast spell, but we do have a spell shield, so I think we should still be able to win here. So 
Yep, GG. I guess we'll go for the strike, draw one. We'll actually probably reroll here if we had any more. This would be a toss up. Right now, because of our uh, bird, our one cost, we're normally having enough mana, but we can't always count on having them on the board. So yeah, let's just go for the strike, draw one. All right, hopefully we can get evolution. That would make everything so much better. Uh, out of the gates is decent. All right, Azir with duplicate. Uh, these are... We don't need all of these. One Fury Horn, not bad. This will actually be decent. Although they have duplicate, so... When they play Azir, they'll play two of them. Uh, yeah, let's play a Fury Horn. Alright, not bad. That's just helping our bard get even stronger. Actually, one thing I didn't consider before, but I think the extra stats from Rush Them Down, I think these also all contribute to bards level up, which is pretty awesome. Alright, let's capture one of those at least. Uh, we'll... Yeah, I think we'll block like this. Don't want to take too much damage before Aurelian Soul. Alright, two of these are seven. Yeah, I figured. See what I see. Carry it with you. Emperor, I am on to remain. Oh, that's not good. Past and present. That's very much not good. Alright, let's go like this. Will we have enough to end this game? So we'll consume this. This will give both of our bards elusive. So yes, we still should have enough to end the game. So hopefully GG. I think we should be good. Yep, GG. Uh, that will be pretty solid. The Boctopus, there is actually a thought to take this, because one, with the Challenger, you can make sure it gets blocked, so you get that Rally. Also, you could kill this with your Bard, with the Corrupted Star Fragment, to also guarantee that Rally. So not, not bad right there. I think we'll go with the Babbling Bandolier, though. Right, hopefully we can get evolution. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! That's like the best power in the game for Bard. Like, it, it, yes, is probably the best power in the entire game for Bard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So happy. All right. Um, this looks pretty crazy, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this and call it a day. All right, Tridimir with level up. Uh, let's get rid of the Cosmic Binding and the Saga Seeker. This is gonna be <laughs> wonderful. Like, look at that. It's already crazy. Ah, oh, wonderful. So there it goes. Oh, right, Trinity, that's why I didn't die. Uh, 
Uh, let's play this here. Uh, I guess we'll go like this. This has regen. Alright, we'll play our bard and probably level up. One thing to note, they do have a four cost like capture card. So they could do that. Although again, we have that spell shield, so we should be fine. Uh, let's consume this. Yeah, let's consume this to give both of our bards elusive. He can consume this and drag it aside so it can't block. And, uh, GG. Norris T on this, pretty solid. Alright, Darius with perfected mana flow. Uh, we can actually want to re roll both of these. We want the Norris T to trigger. We don't need two copies of Bard. The Norris T only triggers when you actually draw the card. If you already have it in your opening hand, it doesn't count. Or it doesn't summon anything. Look at that. Oh, wonderful. So we could attack already. Hmm. Yeah, I think let's open attack first. Before they can play any blockers. Then we can play this. They'll play Darius, we'll capture Darius. Bye-bye. Ah, wonderful. The only problem is we need to... Ah, not, not great. So we don't actually have enough room for both of our bards. And most of these would get blocked out. Yeah, we'll just play one of our bards. We're gonna use the temporary stats on that to make these permanent stats. And yeah, that should be GG. Uh, I think this would probably be the best. Yeah, let's go with that. Alright, Aurelian Soul with Perfected Mana Flow. Let's get rid of the... Yeah, I think just that one. Let's hold on to all the rest. All the rest will be pretty good. Also, they start with the attack token, which is actually good for us. Oh my word, he's already leveled up. We haven't played anything and he's leveled up. That's pretty funny. Um... That is bad, because that just is going to stun both of these. We could capture it, but if we capture it, we don't get our double bards. Not good. Alright, we're going to play this. Alright, they're at 8 mana already. So they could really play some stuff to mess us up. Okay. 
That's fine, I guess. Right, what did they... I guess we'll go like this and kill it. Alright, they have three mana. I don't think they have anything that should stop this. So, GG. Alright, so that was a S-clear uh, bard run. Pretty awesome. We got some great powers there. Did get fairly lucky with a couple of those. Like that stabilize really coming in clutch, letting us end the game with our, our first attack with bard. Pretty much every time, except that one time with yielding. Really fun run. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Also, again, thank you all for your continued support. Whether you're a member going out of your way, going that extra mile, donating money to the channel. Or if you're just a active viewer and subscriber, I really appreciate all of you guys' continued support. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and a great rest of your day.